Welcome to our lecture online and in the next three videos we're going to talk about Kepler's laws of planetary motion and starting with the first one, of course that's always a good place to start, we talk about uh, Kepler's first law and that was kind of an ingenious discovery. For many many centuries people always had trouble figuring out the planetary orbits because they assumed that the orbits were circular but they weren't and Kepler figured that out. He figured out that the orbits were elliptical and not only that, that the Sun was a, one of the two foci. So if we call this focus one and this focus point two of an ellipse. And what that really means is if you take a string that is, uh, that is longer than the, um, how should I say? Yeah, well, definitely longer than the distance between the two foci, quite a bit longer. And you take a pencil, you, you tack them down at these two points, you take a pencil, you put at the end, you take these two ends and you make them tight and straight. And then you go ahead and you try to draw a circle. Of course, those, that string will then prevent you from making a circle. It'll actually make you draw an ellipse. And therefore, you can then say that the R1 plus R2 uh, will always be a constant because the sum of those two lengths have to be the same. So we can say that R1 plus R2 uh, must be a constant. Also you can see that if you take this point and you bring it all the way over here that the sum of the length of R1 and R2 will simply be equal to the full length right here from there to there. But we'll get into that in just a moment. First of all let's assume that that length from the center to here, let's call this length A and let's call the distance from there to there, let's call this the side B and let's call the distance from the central point here to where one of the foci are, let's call this point C. Alright, now um, let's see here, if you lay this flat right here then you know that R1 will be equal to this distance which is the same as this distance right here. Those two distances are the same. So if this is R1, which is the same as R1 over there, and then you can see R2 is equal to the distance between those two points and that, or you could say that's equal to this distance right there. So you can then say that R2 is equal to this distance, R2. So R1 plus R2 is equal to this whole distance right there, which is twice A. So we can say that R1 plus R2 is equal to two times A. Now what is A? Well, this uh, A is called the semi-major axis, where A is equal to the semi-major axis. Semi means one half, and axis, major axis is this distance right here. So the distance all the way from there to there is considered 2A, that's the major axis, where 2A is equal to the major axis, and then 2B would be equal to the distance of the minor axis. And of course then A is the semi-major axis and then B would be the semi-minor axis. This distance is C, so you can see that uh, R1 plus R1 plus C plus C would be the distance of 2A. But then there's actually a better way of looking at it. Let's say for a moment, I'll redraw the ellipse right here. Here's the major axis, here's the minor axis, here's one of the foci, here's the other foci. What if we have our pencil right there and so we draw the line this way and draw the line this way. So here we could say this is R1 and this is R2. And of course this distance right here is C and this distance from there to there would be B. Now you can see that R1 and R2 are equal in length. And we can also say that R1 plus R2 which is equal in length is equal to 2A. So in this particular case we can see, if we take this equation here, that R, let's not call it R, is equal to R1, which is equal to R2, which since R1 plus R2 is equal to 2A, so R plus R1 plus R2 is equal to 2A, and since R is equal to either one of them, we can say that 2R equals 2A, or R is equal to A. So if I, when I have it drawn like this, I notice that the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to A, so I end up with a triangle that looks like this. So this would be B, this would be C, this would be A, and then we can see that using Pythagorean theorem that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared, or if I solve this for C, I can say that C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So that gives us the relationship between A, B, and C. 
the semi-major axis, the semi-minor axis, and the distance from the central point to where the sun would be. So that gives you kind of a feel of how we work with the various components of Kepler's first law. Now what's really interesting about this law is we can then also figure out what the eccentricity is of this orbit and that's what the, the most important part is of the first law of Kepler. So in my next video I'm going to take all this and show you how to find the eccentricity of an, or an orbit, meaning if it's equal to zero then the orbit is circular, if it's equal to a very large number then it's very much elongated. And we also can find out that over time these eccentricities of planets actually do change. But uh, let's go to our next video and show you how we use this information now to talk about the eccentricity of the orbits of planets.